today we're looking at the hottest, the most expensive used loose action figures that you can find right now in 2021. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at the top 20 most expensive loose and used action figures you can find right now. These are action figures that are selling for a ton of money and that you can still find in your toy box, your attic, basement, garage, or even at garage sales, flea markets, and things like that as well. Now the biggest problem most people find with vintage action figures is not knowing what character or what line the figures are from. Now this one's from Thundercats and this is Astral Moat Monster. It's a fairly scarce one. Knowing your main toy lines like Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, Thundercats, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Micronauts, Migos, knowing all of those is a huge plus. This one here is one of the scarcest ones from the set. Most people misidentify where this one even comes from. You can see the price. It sold for $740 loose, out of the box, and played with. At last, I've got He-Man trapped with my walls of evil. Now, Masters of the Universe has quite a few that are worth some really good money. Now, this is Scareglow. This is one of the original ones, and this one sold for 750 bucks. Now, he is complete. He has the cape and his weapon. Still glows very obviously. These are toys that do turn up. They are still out there. They were sold in quantity back in the 80s when these were first released. Now, this one has a very special reason on why this one is worth so much. This was produced for Sears for the the Sears Star Wars Cantina set. Now, they did not have a picture, nor did they see the movie prior to creating this figure. And Snaggletooth is actually a small figure with a different color uniform on as well. So they totally messed it up using the black and white photo. So that's why this one is so scarce and worth almost $800. It was only available in that box set that had to be ordered from Sears. Now here is Cyborg, a DC Comics character, and this is from the Super Powers collection back in the 80s. Now most of the Super Powers collection are fairly collectible, but some of them were very scarcely released, and this is one of them. Again, he almost sold for $800. He's loose. He's been played with, not in the box, nowhere near mint condition but these will still sell now here's another original star wars from the very last movie and this is from the power of the force series the last 17 action figures of the line were limited in production because the line was ending sales were going down past 83 so many of these sorts of items were in limited production most any of the last 17 of the series are worth some good money and this is yak face one of the more collected ones from there now, 1980, Clash of the Titans came out, and they did release toys for it as well. This is the Kraken from that set, and this is one of the scarcest ones from that line of toy series. It is also one of the most expensive ones to have bought back then because of the scale and size of this figure. It's a fairly large figure, $800 as well. Thundercats are back now. Here's another Thundercats. Thundercats have been highly collected for quite some time. They weren't mass produced to the extent that Star Wars were. Some of them were limited as well towards the end of the line. This is Driller. He is always up on the top of the list. And as you can see, it hit the 800 mark as well. Another Star Wars figure. Now this one is special for one specific reason. This one says the red bar on it. Now in many different areas of Star Wars collectibles, there are many different variations variations like the Snaggletooth one. This one's a variation as well. If you look up on the top left there, you will see a red bar, a small red bar with a black border around it. That is why this one is worth so much money. Most of them do not have that. It was not printed on the sticker for the figure. You can find it new. You can find it used out and loose like this. But the ones that are selling for the most money are the loose ones like this. It went for close to $900. Take your main cobra! Wake him, eat slaughtered marauders! 
Now, mail-away figures are almost always worth some good money. A good example is the gold Cylon from the original Battlestar Galactica 1970 series. If you saved proof of purchases from the back of Battlestar Galactica figures, you could have sent away for a gold Cylon. I did that as a kid myself. Those are some of the hardest ones to get. And this is a prime example of that. This is Sergeant Slaughter from the Mail Away Offer. It actually has the coupon that you would have sent as well. This one went in the 1000 plus range. It's extremely scarce. If you did not know this was a Mail Away figure and you found this in a big box of wrestling figures, you may not have a clue that it's that scarce. Now, another original Star Wars figures. Now, this is another one of those you have to know something about. This is a double telescoping light lightsaber. Most of the lightsabers out there were one solid piece that slid back and forth. This one is completely different because the end of the actual lightsaber is in two different pieces. So one section can slide in and then a second one can slide in as well. Kenner did realize in the production run that it wasn't feasible and they could save money by producing it with just one piece and the telescoping lightsaber was ditched very quickly so not many of them were out in production. So a non damn Luke with the telescoping lightsaber can go for over $1,200. Now here's another wrestling figure, a WWF figure from Hasbro. And this is 123 Kid, one of the last runs of these figures. Still works. Many of these have actions, so you can put someone in a headlock and other things like that. The kick feature, which is very common in many of the action superhero ones. And this one went for well over $1,200. Now here's an interesting one that was very limited in production. This is from the original Ninja Turtles series. This is Scratch the Cat. I've only seen a couple of these. They do not show up very often and they go for a lot of money. This one went for 1500 US dollars. It was sold from England. That's so fast, beast man. He-Man! Now here is a real oddity from the He-Man Masters of the Universe line. Now everybody calls this the Wonder Bread figure or Wondra. Now I personally have not seen any advertisement that actually backs up the claim that this was a mail away, but it makes perfect sense. This one does appear though to be a mail away one. Probably Wonder Bread would make the most sense from the evidence that I have seen. This is the most complete version of this that I have seen. The easiest way to tell this one from another one is the color of his hair and the color of his actual outfit itself. $1,700 because the completeness and the condition of this one. There are some of these that show up still sealed in the baggie that it was mailed in. So it was very obviously, from what I see, some form of promotional item. Now here's another mail away one. This is Rapunzel from the My Little Pony series from the 1980s. This is an original one. Another one of those that you would have to mail away for with proof of purchases. Many of these have a redemption coupon in the back like the Boba Fett that was given away from the Empire line from the original Star Wars series. You had to cut off so many proof of purchases and send in the little card that came with it to get your free figure. This one is a phenomenal price at $1,975. Multiple bids. My Little Pony are hot in general, but this is probably one of the hottest ones out there. You can relive it all with Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. Here's another one of the last 17 Star Wars figures from the line. Power of the Force, P-O-T-F, is what you will see. This one is graded with the helmet. Extremely scarce in this condition, complete, ready to go, as you can see. Over $2,000. These are still out there in people's collections. Enough of these are still out there that you can still run into these sorts of figures. G.I. Joe had quite a few that are worth some really good money aside from the vehicles themselves. This is Eels. Complete as you can see it. Everything is authentic. Tight joints. Now many times with figures like this there are reproduction parts that you can find. So you got to be very careful if you're out there. If you find it in a toy collection, chances are you got the real deal but buying it from collectors and things like that sometimes they can have reproduction parts like the fins the guns and things like that almost $2,200 for this scarce G.I. Joe figure
Here's another Masters of the Universe, and this is Megator. This is a fairly scarce one. It's not one you will run into every day. It's a little larger than most of them, very realistic with hair. It's one of the most evil-looking realistic ones, in my opinion, from the line, and this one sold for well over $2,200. Another Star Wars from the original 1970s series. Now, this is one of those that many people didn't think actually existed, and this was just like a fake, a fantasy piece. But some of these vinyl-coated jobs have shown up carded. So it's very obvious that there were some of these that did get out of the factory. For those who are not aware, the vast majority, 99% of every one of these Jawas that was sold was sold with a cloth actual row with a hood that would go over its head as well. Only very few of these got out from the factories for whatever reason, but these are some of the scarcest, hardest to get standard stock variant of a Star Wars figure out there. You can see by the price, $2,500 plus dollars. Another Thundercats, and this is Thunder Wings lion -O. This is a very specific version of him that, again, was released towards the end of the line, and they did not make many of these. These are extremely scarce, but again, they are still out there in the wild. Most people who had these as a child probably aren't aware that these are worth that kind of money. And this one, for that scarcity, sold for almost $2,600. Knowing the different versions and looking stuff up is the key to being able to make this kind of money from just an action figure with his assistant accessory. And last, and one of the highest priced ones out there now, is this Lily Letty Star Wars figure of Han Solo in his Bespin outfit. Now, Lily Letty is a company that made Star Wars figures for the Mexican market. Many of the figures from that line are highly collected across the entire globe because there are tons of variants that they made. Versions of the figures that were only available in Mexico from this line. This was extremely scarce because of the variant. On the back of Han Solo, Although he actually has his belt buckle painted again. So there is a buckle on the front and on the back. Now the advanced action figure price guides for the vintage Star Wars figures have many of these types of variants in it. The prices are crazy insane as you can see. Some of these figures in the right condition can go for $3,000 plus. People turn these sorts of action figures up all the time. They are still out there. You might have them in the attic. You might have them in your closet, in your toy box. Or you might find them at a garage sale flea market or something along that line. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Now one last honorable mention here for everybody, this is a 1989 California Raisins carrot figure. This is extremely scarce as some of the other figures are from this line. This is a small size figure. It fits in the line with the California Raisins that you could have got in many different places. This is extremely collectible, extremely scarce, and as you can see, a ton of bids and it sold for over a thousand bucks.